Hi guys. So I thought my, I might um, mix up the format a little bit here and um, invite my very dear friend Eric to come and join us. He happens to be here visiting me this week in San Francisco and just through the day-to-day -day hangout and explore the city um, time, you know, conversation tends to go into different directions and we thought maybe we would share some of that conversation with you. Um, one of the things that Eric and I have been talking about is um, the chatterbox and um, some other ways that um, exposing and, and playing with and um, looking at what the chatterbox is up to. Um, you know, what, are, what are some ways that that can be um, looked at and, and played with? So I'm very new to San Francisco, and as I've been interacting with um, new community, I've had to explain on several occasions that um, I don't practice privacy. And so when people ask me questions um, about my personal life, sometimes I, I choose to remind them I don't practice privacy. Are you sure that you really want to know the answer to that question that you're asking? You know, because questions are very powerful things. Make sure you really want to know the answer. And so with Eric here, I thought it'd be kind of fun to talk a little bit more about this because Eric is also someone who doesn't practice privacy. Um, Eric, share what that looks like in your life. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, I, you know, I can tell you the first place people go when they hear that is, um, oh, so you know, you walk around your house naked in front of the windows. No, we're not talking about, hmm. we're not talking about decency. We're talking about privacy. And, uh, uh, yeah, I, you know, I gave up uh, practicing privacy about 10 years ago when I um, discovered a group of friends and ended up moving into a community living type situation with them hmm. and, um, and realized that that these other human beings I'm living with is as different as our backgrounds were and um, uh, different as our personalities were and what we did for a living and all of that, uh, we all ended up noticing that we shared pretty much the exact same thoughts and feelings on mm. what it is to be human. and. Uh, and I'm not talking about like we didn't share the same religion or, or the same philosophies or anything like that. That was more of what made us different from each other. But it was, um, you know, the human concerns that drive our lives were the same for everybody. And, uh, and we noticed that keeping those kind of hidden into our cells, you know, and holding them close, mm -hmm. um, it was sort of ridiculous because... It was literally like putting up a door and a wall saying, I'm willing to talk to you about anything to go anywhere with you except for these certain things, mm. right? And, and so these certain things, I'm guessing, are along the lines of um, we all need to eat. We all need to poop. We all need to mm. pay our rent. Yeah. yeah Basic right. human experience uh -huh. you know, fundamentals. And stuff that you, know, you, you hear things like, um, oh, it's none of your business how much money that person makes yeah. at their job. Or, right. Um, you know, it's none of your business whether their relationship is working or not. And, you know, um, you ended up moving into this community mm -hmm. with me later, and uh, there were couples at this community. And, uh, you know, the standard operating procedure for people, especially in this culture, would be, you know, don't inquire about their relationship. Don't, you know, mm -hmm. tread on any toes or, you know, ask about anybody's business. Uh, but it, it turns out that that, that just puts walls up uh, in front of areas that we may actually be able to make a difference or that we could even celebrate with somebody. Sure. You know, if I know more about what's going on with you, then, you know, I can celebrate your successes and joys sure. and that sort of thing, as well as assist if something's going wrong. So it, it just occurred to me very quickly that there really is no area that I had or any of these people had, and, and I assumed all human beings, that needed to be necessarily off limits and that there was really anything mm -hmm. to gain by putting them off limits. Mm. That, that's the point right there. By putting them off limits, there's nothing to gain. So 
uh, this practice specifically attacks um, the chatterbox right at its core, right? So imagine um, by not practicing privacy, you're not allowing the chatterbox to really maintain that sense of control and, and to be there in the forefront of your daily experience. So an example of that would be, um, uh, you know, how is, how is that person's relationship going? And maybe they're in the middle of some very uh, intimate um, debate or turmoil within their relationship. And by not practicing privacy and you asking them that question, how is your relationship going, it might take them a minute to build the courage to actually share with you what's going on um, you know, behind closed, what, what would normally be considered closed doors. But what that provides is that the chatterbox is no longer able to um, maintain a sense of identity and maintain a sense of, uh, again, this control or being in the forefront of our experience. Um, and that's a very scary place, very vulnerable place to be. Um, but it's, it's very powerful and it and, uh, really, again, attacks that chatterbox right at its, at its core. You'll, you'll find, I, I found, that, this, that the chatterbox, the sort of runaway chatterbox is what mm -hmm. we're talking about. You know, the chatterbox that just will not shut up about whatever it's going on about. Mm -hmm. and, and not just thoughts, but feelings and stuff. Sure. Um, it's largely, it largely works itself up in a, into a feedback loop. And, and it's like, uh, you know, talking to yourself feeds talking to yourself. And when you, when you open the end of that loop, and start talking to others and communicating with others and getting communication from them, it sort of opens up that feedback and you don't, you don't get stuck with that sure. constant you know, chatterbox that talks about the same thing over and over. You're now in conversation with someone else and it can, it can move forward and, and transform and empty itself and you know, it, mm -hmm. just, it just has, has a reason to shut up. <laughs> yeah, it starts to run out of uh, fuel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, so these these um, these thought patterns, the the, the repetitiveness, um, is is really what's kind of keeping the chatterbox going. And if all of a sudden that repetitiveness is being revealed, mm -hmm. right, then then there's no more energy there to kind of keep it going. You know, it's gotta it's gotta be creative and find something else, which is ultimately what happens. But um, in a different vein. We'll, we'll talk more about that. So um, take a look and see where in your life um, could you possibly open up the doors and stop um, hiding the, the, the contents of your chatterbox and start to share that with others. You know, maybe um, I would invite you to take on um, not practicing privacy in your life and see see how that goes even if it's just for a day just for a day if anybody asks you anything give them the most honest mm -hmm. um, answer that you can surmise and see see what happens no matter how vulnerable that makes you feel no matter how scary that may seem to you yeah and you know you'll find I think that some of the most fun things to reveal are the best things like you just want to express to somebody how much you love them and how important mm. they are to you stuff that you know it's like it's a coworker or something and it's not a setting that you would normally think to do that right. it's the best time to stop practicing private to stop practicing privacy and um, make the leap into sharing what's actually there for you so you know I, I, I don't think you're necessarily talking about um, you know oh I've got the worst headache ever today and you just want to spread that around to everybody who mm. will listen, right? Right. Yeah, right? Not so much that, but but really what is the what is the authentic communication there, I think is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. What is there really there for you to say to somebody? Absolutely. In in the context of um, they're asking a question. Mm. Right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, like Eric just pointed out, don't walk around and um, I, I call this oral diarrhea, mental vomit, right? You don't want to walk around and actually vocalize all that your chatterbox is up to, right? Nobody wants to hear that, seriously. Um, however, in the context of a question of someone um, taking a look at your life and asking you, hey, how are you doing today? Don't just give them the simple, oh, I'm fine, 
life is good. Ugh, today sucks. No, 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 don't go there. Give them that authentic answer. What is really there for you to be um, responding to or, or, or replying to them with um, in the context of the question they're asking? So, how are you doing today? Oh, well, honestly, you know what? Today's kind of painful for me. I'm having some emotional turmoil. And even at the office, it's appropriate to say these things right now. Of course, there's laws and things. You've got to watch your boundaries there. But see what comes up. See what comes up. And, and um, even if it's just for a day, let us know in the, in the comments. And thanks for listening.